And today on the bench I've got an HH Electronics mixer amp. It's an SM200. It's from about 1980s I think. And the mixer itself works, but there's a problem with the digital effects module. <laughs> That could be trouble. Well the SM200 is uh, an early six channel mixer amp. It's quite chunky. The digital effects unit is actually an optional part and it just screws in. The worrying part about this digital effects module is it uses very obsolete chips. It contains five bucket brigade devices which are CMOS chips, very static sensitive and they stopped making them decades ago. There's literally none left. Well, I think I saw one on Alibaba for about 50 quid. I doubt it's genuine. Just going to monitor these speaker outputs. I think we'll go with input one. Well, we've got output, which is a good start. Let's see if we've got any effects working. I'm still not sure if it's working right. It's doing something, but I need to be a bit more methodical about this test, I think. One button, a bit of echo there. But it's not responding to the frequency setting knob. That's the first thing. The only knob that makes an effect is the echo repeat, which sends it mad. I don't think it's working quite as it should. Although I'm not quite sure exactly what it's supposed to be doing, but there's a lot of unresponsive controls and a bit of crunchy switches going on so it's not going to hurt to take this apart well there's only four screws and there's a single five pin plug that's all that's connected to this And on the bottom of this we've got a serial number 11342, I don't know if that's uh, a new one. Newish I reckon, I think this was designed in 1977, so that sounds like quite a lot of them. And of course a handy hint here, the digital effects module contains no user service or parts. Do not remove the cover. There we go. Well I think four screws gets you inside from the looks of it. See what we get. And this just slides off. No, <laughs> a bit fiddly. There we go. Well, it's constructed. There's a motherboard with the switches on here for the front panels. Then we've got three separate upright boards on some rather old socket sort of technology there. We got the warning. <laughs> warning, do not mess with the settings. <laughs> well, we won't do. <laughs> well, there's a lot of them. Hmm. Did manage to get hold of some schematics for this, uh, and they're not the most detailed, to be honest. Um, the sort of details we've got the one PCB, which has got the clock generator on, and some input and output filters, which will be low pass filters. Uh, then we got a board with the um, bucket brigade delayed devices on here, and then this third board does, I think, all the mixing, really. Just discharge myself on the uh, scope terminals there. Yeah, because this contains some static sensitive parts, um, but as they're basically unobtainable, we'll be extra careful. So we can actually just pull these boards up one at a time. So there's the clock driver and filter board. You can see the uh, filters here, all the resistors and capacitors. Yeah, standard sort of low-pass filter network. And here we have the bucket brigade devices. Now these are the static sensitive parts. These are actually made by a company called Reticon who had long gone. Um, you can't get these at all. I'm not sure if these are date codes but it's got like 8596 at 1985. Hmm, not sure. Then finally we have this layer. Uh, this is the mixer board basically, it mixes all the signals together. 
pretty straightforward. That leaves us with the sort of back plane and the switch pack. Which, um, I think they're a bit crusty. Just make sure all the buttons are in the um, <laughs> out position. There, yes, they are. Right, we'll just measure these from the centre pin to the top. Check for continuity. Yeah, it's good. Well, they're all good, so we'll go with all switches in there this time. Well, they might be a bit crunchy on the transition, but they all measure quite good. I'll just give them a little squirt with some air cleaner. Okay, let that run down and soak. And just work the switches backwards and forwards. A quick test of the pots, just to put a 5 volt supply across them. Put the ground in there. I'm going to connect this scope probe just onto the wiper. And just give it a bit of a twiddle. We're looking for a nice smooth action which we've got. It slows down at the top because it's a log taper on this. But there's no jagged traces to be seen. We don't want any sort of scratchiness and discontinuity on here. This one looks fine. The same test again on the middle pot. Yeah, this one's fine too. No problems there. No problem with this one. A linear taper as well, nice and smooth, no problems. No problems with the front plate, so we need to work on a strategy on how to test those bucket brigade device chips. A hard to test. However, I'm thinking if we make sure the clock generator is working, because we didn't seem to get any response from the pots on here, which are clearly working. Luckily that board sits on the front of this, so we can actually get to it with the scope probes. Let's piece these back together carefully. This one to start with. Then the board packed full of very rare chips. I noticed the end posts are missing off the board, I think they've snapped off. I'm not sure what's going on there. And this is the clock generator board. Done with these two chips here, I think there's a um, dual flip flop and a comparator. Hmm. It is a little bit wobbly. Just put the uh, paper back over this. If it will go back on, just to separate it. And for my own sanity, I need to label these wires up. So not intuitive. I mean, what would you think black is? Yes, that's right. That's the input. Oh, of course. Then we got brown. Very popular choice, brown is ground. Then we got red, obviously, minus 15 volts. And the orange, orange is plus 15 volts, why not? Which leaves yellow, which must be the output. Well, we've lashed up some power supplies now. I've got some of the connections on here and some on the back of the board. Pins 9 and 10 are the clock generator output, so we've got uh, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. There's one there. Pin 9. Let's give it a whirl. We'll start with the echo delay. As we turn the knob we see the clock spacing change. Oh! It's shrinking again. If I wind it back. It opens up and it closes up. It's not changing very much either. I'd expect a much bigger change. Something wrong there. 
What about the frequency, vibrato frequency? Uh, this is making no difference at all. There's definitely something wrong with the clock chain circuit. Um, luckily, this day is about the time when putting chips in sockets was popular. <laughs> that should be quick. So just take this board off. Let's start with this chip here. This is the dual flip flop. This is a CD4013B. We'll just lever it out gently. There we go. Let's have a look. Yes, there's <laughs> quite a few of them. Well, the socket looks in decent condition. That's not bad. Just offer this chip up. Pop the board back in, give it a quick test. Is it any different? Ah, <laughs> no, <laughs> no different at all. Okay, it could be a chip further in the stage. I'll try the comparator next. Try the power again. Now we've got stuff going on. This looks a bit more like it. Let's turn some knobs up and down. Oh, this seems to actually be having an effect. That's more like I was expecting to see. So that's the, uh, the echo depth. As you turn that up, you get a much more pronounced effect. Excellent. And the frequency, turn it all the way down. Very slow, creating like a flange effect. So there's a bad LM339 quad comparator in there. <laughs> Who knew? Now the clock generator's working, I can focus more on what's coming out of these BBD chips. Take some of these probes off. Let's undo the board. Don't need that now. I'm going to take this board out. Right, I'm going to label these chips up so I don't mix the order up. <laughs> so I identify them. Just give them a simple number. So we've got one, two, three, four, oh, dodgy pen. Very dodgy pen. Come on. Look. <laughs> Now I need to take the chips out one at a time, so I'm just going to bend these capacitors out of the way and the resistors behind them, just so I can get in there. Well, that one's close. <laughs> That's been soldered close down. So the idea being, I can just get the screwdriver in just there, just to tease the end up. We'll see here that position 1 for the chip is great because the output signal which comes to these resistors here just gets circulated back round and fed back into the other side of the chip to come out there so it's a good full functional test. So the test is going to run as follows. Put number 1 in. Reconfigure the scope, we don't want waveform 2 on, we don't want waveform 3 on. Stick that in the middle somewhere. The best way to check it is to add the echo effect and that on, and of course turn it off. And that's what we're looking for. So we turn the echo effect all the way down, it's much less, as we increase it you get a much deeper effect on the waveform. So chip number one's perfect, so we'll try number two. Chip number two. Chip number three is good. Chip 
Chip number four, also good. And finally, <laughs> testing number five. <laughs> is Johnny Five alive? And number five is alive. <laughs> well, that's lucky. Full set of working BBD chips. <laughs> Probably quite valuable. Now, just to put them all back where they came from. I have to say, these aren't the nicest sockets. And you've got wipers on one side. Cheap. But I think they're good enough. Here we are. A thing to behold. <laughs> Put the warning label back on. <laughs> it's gone a bit curly. There we go. Let's check its functions individually. Channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, and number 4. It's individually working fine. We'll give it an input. So, echo A, perfect. B, yep, and C, yep, and finally D. Can't fault that. Put them all on together and we get a right thing going on. <laughs> well, I think we need to get this back in the mix so we can listen to it. It's going to sound crazy. The frequency spectrum of that noise. <laughs> Put one kilohertz in and all that junk comes out. And just for kicks and stick a square wave in. Yeah there's quite a few harmonics on there. <laughs> so it did need repair and it got fixed with a very low cost part quad comparator LM339 these are very cheap could have been a lot worse <laughs> catch you next time